Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 22nd, 2022, current on 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for new tropical cyclones to be forming in the East Pacific over the next couple of days, and when the Atlantic Basin will start to wake up, and what exactly will the threats be for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season? Is the hurricane season changing? Let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a while look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet around the basin for today. This is pretty normal, especially for late July, where the interseasonal activity is just not quite there. However, we do have a tropical wave that is coming off the coast of Africa today. This is actually combined with pretty anomalous westerly winds across the main development region today. This is helping to warm up the deep tropics as we were talking about over the past couple of days. And in the East Pacific Basin, we are also watching a plethora of tropical systems. Two areas of interest here indicated by the National Hurricane Center. One with a 30% chance over the next five days. And this new system back here, this second system back here is probably the one that will actually go on to develop. It seems like this lead wave is probably not going to develop. If we should take a look at this here on the zoomed out satellite imagery here today. We noticed that a couple of things in the East Pacific Basin. We have the remnants here of once what was tropical storm Estelle and then a uh, hurricane Estelle. Uh, but that is now a post-tropical cyclone as it continues to kind of move off towards the west and eventually southwest. This will not be developing into a tropical cyclone and this poses no threat for the island of Hawaii. We're also watching two other systems behind that. This is kind of the lead wave out here and then there's the secondary wave that will kind of be moving generally towards the northwest as well and this one could go on to be a tropical cyclone as this progresses towards the north and west over the next couple of days. But so far, no threats to the island, uh, really to any of the island chains in the Pacific, and no threats to Mexico or the Baja California Peninsula at this time. So in the Atlantic Basin, we'll be watching for the additional development potentially over the next couple of weeks. This is the GFS forecast, the 60 run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Now, what we noticed today is that we generally have westerly winds across most of the MDR down here. And what this is actually doing is this helps to increase the warmth in the deep tropics, but it also creates this background cyclonic vorticity in the atmosphere because in the upper levels, you have easterly winds, these upper level easterlies with the African easterly jet, the tropical easterly jet is screaming through here in the upper levels and it's creating this background easterly wind combine that with low level westerly wind you can see how that induces areas of spin in the atmosphere and so that's kind of what we're getting here now in the gfs forecast we kind of noticed that we do have several tropical waves this is actually a monsoon trough that is across here this basically we've seen this in years like 2020 where these systems try to get entangled up with the monsoon trough, but they get ejected northward into the cooler waters and they can't develop as um, firmly as they could down here, like in the deep tropics. Now, you can see that kind of happening again and some waves actually get ejected north of the Cabo Verde Islands. We're not really expecting development out of this because especially right now, the sea surface temperature profile is just not all that supportive for tropical development, especially north of the island, but at you know, later in the season that could definitely change. And that's something we'll have to watch. But again, no signs of development, at least over the next couple of days. When we look here in the European forecast, now the Euro is a little bit more amplified with this wave overall. It's a little bit further south too. It's still near the island chain, the Cabo Verde Islands, but eventually this dips southwestward into the tropical Atlantic and then finds itself in at least favorable sea surface temperature profiles as we head towards the end of July. And the one thing that's going to be interesting here is the precipital water anomalies here. So if we kind of take a look at this, this basically indicates the dry and moist air in the atmosphere. And what we're kind of able to gleam from this is that we notice that again, we kind of have had these sacrificial waves that come off of the deep tropics and they produce this little bit of moisture that kind of lingers. And we notice that when this next wave comes off within the next about five days, it actually has a favorable moist pocket to work with here. We noticed that there's actually some pretty substantial moisture and that is actually moving off towards the west. But the caveat here is watch how this moisture goes poof. And there really isn't much of a wave 
that is indicated by hour 210 on July 30th. Now, there could still be a system in here. If we actually look at the upper level environment, we notice that it's actually very favorable, especially for most of its journey across the deep tropics. We have generally easterly winds across in the upper levels, which is very supportive uh, for outflow production and divergence aloft, which you need to get those pressure perturbations down at the surface. And we're just not really seeing a whole lot of moisture. That's the problem. Eventually, upper level winds do become pretty hostile uh, by about August 2nd for a brief period of time because of a cutoff upper level system. But other than that, the tropics remain pretty favorable in terms of the sea surface temperature profile. Now, the, I, we we're kind of talking about and hinting that the hurricane season might be changing. And if we actually kind of look at this, this is the European monthly forecast for the accumulated cyclone energy, mainly in the West Pacific, the Central Pacific, East Pacific, and Atlantic basins. Now, the one thing that we have to kind of take away from this is that, again, these aren't going to be perfect, but they could give us kind of an idea of what we might be expecting for the remainder of the season. Now, we noticed that in the deep tropics here in the Atlantic, the climate mean forecast ACE, the accumulated cycle in energy, is about 1.0. That is the forecast mean. And the climate mean is also 1.0. Now, this is above, uh, th this is actually below what we've seen in the previous forecast, but it is still enough where we could see a few pretty active storms out there across the remainder, you know, through the remainder of the season. But the problem here is that even if we have fewer storms, which is what this could potentially be suggesting, fewer storms does not necessarily mean fewer impacts. It just means that there's less overall storms. Now, what I'm about to show you here is the risk impact for the 2022 hurricane season. We talked about over the past couple of days who has the highest risk, but this is going to break it down into a little bit more of individualized areas. So we can kind of take a look at this graphic here. We notice that we actually have a very high potential threat area across the Caribbean extending through into Cancun, Jamaica, Cuba, and Florida. Now, this is all based on the Colorado State University forecast. So the majority of this is all what CSU has, which you can find if you just type in uh, CSU Hurricane Forecast 2022, you can read their whole paper on this. Uh, but this is pretty much a carbon copy of what they're forecasting the only exception here is that I'm actually kind of revising that a little bit uh, to kind of fit within some of the climate models that we've seen for July. Now, again, generally speaking, we have a very high risk of impacts in the deep tropics and the Caribbean. This is especially due to an upper level high pressure over the North Atlantic high seas that we've been talking about over the past several months. And then continuing that, we have a high risk, a very high to high risk in the Gulf of Mexico. Again, Florida has a 9 out of 10 chance of seeing tropical cyclone impacts to within a 25 mile area of Florida this season. And then kind of combine that again, almost a 100% chance of seeing some type of impacts to Florida, about a 97% chance based on CSU's forecast. And again, a 90% chance really, 9 out of 10 shot of seeing some type of impact in the Caribbean from a tropical storm, hurricane, or potentially a major hurricane. Then we continue into the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf Coast states, Texas with a 70% chance, then continuing into Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina, both having 80% chance of impacts to that area, 70% chance within a moderate category, a moderate to high category for Virginia, and a 5 out of 10 chance for portions of Massachusetts, so with well within that moderate category. So again, focus exactly where your highest risks are this season. Now, everybody has some risk of being impacted by a tropical cyclone this year. It doesn't matter where you are or how low the chance is. If it's not a 0% chance, you have a risk, and that's very important to understand. So make sure you're taking your precautions, even if you live up in the Northeast U.S., or you don't think it's going to be that bad of a season, I promise you it only takes one storm to make a difference and change a life. So you need to be focusing on that. But again, my main concerns this season will be anywhere from about Florida, 
the Gulf Coast states down southward into the Caribbean. Again, the island chain, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, the entire island chain, and of course, Central America as well could see those threats as well. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.